Okay, I want to welcome everyone here to the uh, next installment of the Book of Judges. Tonight we're going to be looking at uh, chapter 14, uh, which I, I have uh, titled A Disastrous Marriage, and uh, <clears throat> or The Marriage That Wasn't, or uh, uh, there's some other other thoughts anyway, but uh, we're going to be studying just the just chapter 14 tonight, because that ends up the the first part actually of of uh samson's uh life as it were i mean the the he had the, the book of judges kind of broken up into two pieces of samson's life and uh, so this was one part of it and then there's the the other part so anyway uh we'll begin with the blessing baruch atad and i eloheinu melech haolam asher kiddishan of mitzvah tav it's ivan or lasso made right torah Blessed to you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us in his word and commands us to engross ourselves in the words of Torah. <clears throat> now, um, before we begin, are there any questions or comments uh, from um, last week or anything that anyone would uh, um, need, to, need to talk about? Okay. All right. Well, then let's go ahead and get going. <clears throat> and here's our timeline. I took some of those other timelines out because we've seen them all for several weeks, months, and so you're already tired of them, I know. Um, and so here we are. We're looking at uh, we're here's here's Samson down here um, around uh, 1100 uh, you know for 40 years there. And uh, <clears throat> it overlaps with the uh, with the high priest uh, Eli in the, in the temple, and that's where we start getting away from the judges, and then over toward uh, going back toward the uh, the high priests and and uh, the kings. Samuel, of course, being the last judge and the first prophet, so that's where they transition from judges to prophets, um, because they had then the kings to to do the um, uh, ruling. All right, and then here's the other uh, other uh, called the the uh, headache timeline, where it gives you a headache trying to figure it out. All right, and uh, just another review as to where these these judges were, um, and you'll see uh, down here. This is where uh, Samson was, just basically due west of uh, Jerusalem. And um, we'll be talking about some of these cities and, and so forth. And then here's another <clears throat> a, a real good map that I saw that um, um, it shows uh, the, the area that was controlled by the Philistines. Okay, now there, this is kind of valley in here. And so, and then on this side, it starts getting up into the hills and is less, um, less fertile or less easy to grow anyway i mean it's just there is it's all fertile but it's just harder to grow in in this in the rocky soil and then of course you get down here to beersheba and that's that's dry desert it's it's uh really hard to hard to <clears throat> grow anything down there unless you got a lot of water so <clears throat> but these red arrows here are um uh, <clears throat> incursions into Israel and Judah that you'll see not only in the in uh, judges but also later on in um, first second Samuel and uh, Kings and Chronicles where it talks about <clears throat> the the uh, Philistines and their battles with uh, Saul King David and uh, so forth and so um, I just thought that was a pretty neat uh, chart will uh, probably uh, carry that on into some or hold on to it and carry it in some other lessons as we uh, look at different things uh, because you'll see here Timna that's where we're going to be talking about today um, and Zora which is um, where where um, Samson was born that's his hometown right there and then Timna is where we're going to be talking about today all right so um, just going on, then Samson went down to Timnah and Ida Timnah 
in Timnah a woman, one of the daughters of the Philistines. So he came back and told his father and mother saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. So now go get her for me as a wife. All right. There is a lot of stuff in there. And this is a chart just telling you where where Zora is. We've already seen the Zora and Timna and then Ashdod and, and Ashkelon down here. Um, and you see Jerusalem. So um, you kind of get an idea then of where, where this is taking place. So Timna is about four miles west of Zora. Uh, this is Zora, this is Timna, and um, uh, it's in Philistine territory. Uh, so Solomon, you know, he went went into Philistine, Philistine territory. So, and it doesn't say anything about any trouble going in there or, or whatever. So the border, you know, the Philistines must have been pretty confident that uh, they could control everything. So they they'd let people come and go. And uh, so Samson went down to Timnah, and um, literal—I mean, uh, in a literal fashion, or a—I um, um, would say um, more of a, a pictorial fashion. Uh, Samson uh, he re goes into his um, his early manhood here, uh, and where does he go? He goes down into Timnah and. That just was kind of a beginning of, of quite a few little downturns that, uh, that Samson had. In fact, uh, it, it kind of uh, parallels the, the um, story of the children of Israel because they continually went down and down and down. You know, they would they have these cycles of revival and redemption and, and so forth. And, but it seemed like every time that they, uh, you know, they, at, were at a high point and then they uh, fell and then they came back, but they didn't come back as high. And then they, they had, you know, fell again, came back, but then, then they didn't come back as high. So there, they were constantly on a downhill uh, slide toward, uh, toward uh, the monarchy of uh, Saul and David. And so uh, marrying a Philistine woman, you know, that was, that was verboten uh, that uh, you, you not just couldn't do that, not supposed to do that. And uh, they were, you know, that the parents were saying, you know, um, you know, why can't you marry, uh, you know, you know, the, you can just imagine the mother saying, hey, why can't you marry a nice Jewish girl? Um, and uh, aren't, uh, aren't any of the, are the girls from the tribe of Dan, aren't they good enough? And so they're also thinking another thing here too. Samson was a Nazarite. Okay, the mother was supposed to have, uh, was supposed to have taken on these Nazarite um, requirements so that her son would be born and his whole life would be lived as a Nazarite. So they're looking at this because they feel like that God had a purpose for his life, and that here he is now kind of looking at uh, marrying a Philistine woman. Now that is just, uh, they're looking at that and trying to figure out what in the world is going on here? How in the world can Samson uh, continue to be a Nazarite and be called of God and do the things that God wants him to do? Uh, if he's going to, you know, go down into the Philistine camp and marry one of their women who, you know, they are, they are pagans. They do not, um, uh, believe in the one true God. In fact, they have many little G gods. And uh, so uh, another thing was that <clears throat> for him to go and demand of his parents, uh, for them to go and make all the arrangements to get this woman for his, uh, to be his wife. I mean, that was just simply not done. Uh, the, um, the culture of the day was that women, I mean, the, uh, the parents would uh, go into a contract with another set of parents and then you know arrange the the marriage now you know how, how much um how much the uh, the bride and groom had to say about it I, it's uh, open to speculation possibly in some cases they they definitely had some uh, uh some say so in it but uh for the most part these things uh, were a uh, an arranged thing because the the 
parents of one were lo always looking to make sure that their child would would marry well and and uh, would have a, a good life so um let's uh, any any comments or questions about that okay going ahead with um, so then his father and his mother said to him is there no woman among the daughters of your kinsmen or among all of our people that you're going to take a wife from the uncircumcised philistines but Samson said to his father, get her for me, for she is right, uh, she is the right one in my eyes. But his father and mother did not know that it was Adonai, for he was seeking a pretext against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines were ruling over, over uh, Israel. All right, so, uh, you know, the, the parents were just, um, um, they were, understandably upset i mean here they were their their son the nazarite he was supposed to be a judge in israel he they had all these aspirations for him he uh, he was a miracle child and so now there he's going to go around with go down there to the the uh, the pagans the the philistines and uh, you know the bible calls them the uncircumcised philistines because that was uh, that was the the jewish identity marker of course being circumcision and uh um samson you know he's he's having none of it he's he uh, said to his father i mean this is pretty presumptuous actually for this guy to uh you know get uh, you know telling his father he says get her right for me she's the right one in my eyes the right in my eyes now that's pretty much symptomatic of all israel at the time and the bible even called it uh, like that and it said in those days everyone did what was right in his own eyes and uh, so therefore you know basically it was it was um um what you could call just anarchy or chaos uh, religiously speaking and uh, possibly even um even socially or politically speaking because really and truly if you don't have if you don't put god first in your life then uh many times uh, other things that are in your life are just gonna uh fall into a disarray so uh in in the story of samson here the right that he had uh you know he said it's right in my eyes that had changed from uh the definition of being uh, correct or upstanding or uh, maybe even holy in some uh, in some cases um, that um, that had changed from the the right to just yeah, down made that downhill slide to uh, just desirable or lustful kind of a thing that she's oh yeah that's the right one boy I like that one um, and so you know it was um, you see that in the language that uh, Samson was uh, certainly not a spiritual person. He was uh, sensual. He was, uh, uh, I would say, man, he was the quintessential teenager uh, or young, uh, young adult, you know, the early twenties where with the raging hormones and uh, um, just, uh, and an attitude that he was, he was going to do what he was going to do regardless of what anyone else did. So, um, that's, um, eh, that's just the way he was. Uh, but now we get a little bit of a, of, of a clue here and we're, we're written in, we've got a secret going. I mean, we, we've been told a secret here in the, by the, by the writer. And that is that, um, uh, you know, the father and mother didn't know that it was all, this was all arranged by God. He was taking this all of this stuff he was rearranging he's arranging all of this kind of stuff as a pretext he was making up something that's going to be really really nasty uh as a you know a pretext to go against the um um against the philistines and it says for at that time the uh, philistines were ruling over israel so we know from that it says at that time uh, that when Judges was written, the book of Judges was written, then Philistines were no longer held sway over uh, over Israel. So that they said, well, at that time, uh, Philistines 
ruled over over Israel. Uh, but uh, you know, just kind of implied now from the the writer that not you know that's not the case today. So maybe that's just my implication, but that's the way I read it anyway. So um, and so while his um, let me go ahead while his uh, mother and father father and mother went down to Timnah, Samson went to the vineyards of Timnah, and uh, behold, a young lion came roaring at him. Then the Ruach Adonai came mightily on him, and he tore him apart as one would have split a young goat. Yet he had nothing in his hand. He did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. So he went down and talked to the woman, and she looked right in uh, Samson's eyes. Okay, now, in this part here, uh, said he and his father and mother then went on down to Timnah. Evidently, they thought, well, look, if we go down there with him, at least we may have uh, some way of uh, getting back a little bit of control here. You know, it'd be better to go down into Timnah and uh, be part of this than to just say, hey, you know, you're not doing right. Just go and do. Uh, so they went, they went down to, uh, to Timnah and it says that Samson went to the vineyards of Timnah. Now there's an awful lot in here that's not, not said. The vineyards uh, when in uh, the literature of the day and uh, in some of, you know, extra biblical literature, certainly um, the, the vineyards were a sign of, of, uh, happiness you know because the the wine and so forth and uh even the um i think uh i can't remember is the benjamites or the danites uh they had this deal where um at a certain time in the springtime or whatever they had these uh, dances and so forth and the women would go dancing through the uh the vineyards and the men would chase after them and then that's where they you know then they would uh, grab the girl and and uh so marriages ensued from that uh some from that uh, kind of semi-ritual and so vineyards uh, in in israel as, as well as in the um um greater middle east had the connotation of joy happy uh good time and so the vineyard and dance and, and and some kind of an activity would have kind of gone along with uh, <clears throat> the the wedding uh, party. You know, there would be parties or whatever and and so forth. So uh, <clears throat> the parents went down to Timna perhaps to try to to uh, negotiate some of the the marriage thing because there were you know there are. Um, legal things and uh, contractual things in a, in the marriage, you know, that uh, ketubah uh, and so forth. So um, they'd gone on, but Samson went down through the vineyards. And so maybe he was just, you know, there was some partying going on or whatever. It uh, doesn't say, but uh, maybe he's just looking it over to see where the party would be. But a lion came out at him. And uh, uh, so it says that the Ruach HaKodesh or the, the Ruach Adonai, came mightily on him. And in some of the translations, the, instead of saying came mightily upon him, it says it came rushing on to him. And um, um, <clears throat> so uh, that's a lot different than the, uh, the Spirit of God coming on, say, for instance, Gideon or Jephthah or some of the other, um, some of the other judges that uh, we saw where uh, that, the spirit just came down on them. And in this case, it says it came rushing on him or mightily on him. And so he tore the line apart. Well, not only did he just kill it, but uh, he tore it in two somehow, you know, it's like it's splitting a goat. Well, like you split uh, a goat for um, roasting, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, you, you can split it apart along the backbone and uh, then that way you can turn it over and both sides of the ribs get cooked and so forth. And so uh, it said, and he had nothing in his hand, but he didn't tell his mother or father what he had done. So again, he is pushing them out of 
his life in a way. I mean, he's doing what he's going to do and he kind of just, you know, pushes them out of the way. And, uh, um, so he went on down, he talked to the woman and, uh, she looked right in Samson's eyes. Now I have to admit that when I look, when I read this translation, I had to go and, and look someplace else because so, she, uh, he went down and talked with the woman and she looked right in his eyes. Now, what did the, you know, what I'm thinking of is that he's telling her, okay, we're going to get married and so on. And rather than, you know, being, uh, shy and demure and, and, you know, okay, you know, that sort of thing. She's just looking him right in the eye. And so I'm trying to find it from the commentaries. All right. What does that mean? What is that? She looked right in his eye, but then it finally dawned on me that, uh, said so he went down, talked with a woman and even more so that she looked like that. that's the right one. It looks, looks right in my eye. That's, uh, and that's, that's what it, uh, what it actually meant. So, um, uh, there you go. <laughs> so, um, and so the, the language though, in, in this whole thing was that, uh, yeah, it kind of points to the fact that the woman didn't really, you know, she didn't have a choice. I mean, this, this is the middle East of 3000 years ago. She's not going to have that much of a, of a choice as to what happens, uh, if her father's uh, for it and, and they look like, oh, okay, this could be good. Uh, for the family, yeah, she she goes along. That's that's it. And um, so, any any comments on on that so far? Any comments or questions? All right, let's go on. So after a while, I returned to get her, but turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. So he scraped it into his hands and went on eating as he went. Now, when he came to his father and mother, he gave them, gave some to them and they ate it, though he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey from the carcass of the lion. Then his father went down to the woman and Samson made a banquet there, for so the uh, young men used to do. All right. Um, okay, a bunch of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Now, uh, after a while, it says, after a while, he returned to her. So evidently, in the culture of the day, there was a period of time between the, the uh, betrothal and the actual marriage. And, you know, in, in the Jewish uh, uh, circles, it could be up, you know, a year while they're, okay, you're betrothed. And then a year later, uh, you get married. But in the meantime, the, the bride or the groom is uh, building a, uh, he's building quarters onto the uh, family compound so that he will have a place for his new bride to, uh, uh, to stay in the, and then that whole year she's trying to get together her trousseau or whatever, uh, uh, all of that st uh, stuff that brides do. And also praying that her husband is a good craftsman and carpenter. So she'll have a nice place to live when uh, they do get married. And uh, so, you know, it takes, takes a while. We don't know how long it took. It just says after a while. But uh, then uh, so, uh, Samson, he, he said he turned aside. Went, he went out from his, you know, he deviated from his path to go and look at this, uh, this carcass because he's going along there and he's thinking, hey, you know what? I wonder whatever happened to that lion that, uh, that I killed. Maybe he just wanted to uh, go back over there and relive that and kind of puff out his chest a little bit and roar and uh, said, yeah, look what I did. And he said, there, uh, and then there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass. Now, um, you know, I'm a beekeeper. And, um, you know, I've, I've got found bees in, you know, in swarms and so forth. And I've seen bees in, in all sorts of different places up in the eaves of houses and uh, in, the, in the hollow of a tree. And uh, I even saw a swarm uh, one time on a, uh, uh, a generator in a shipyard when we were trying to work on uh, uh, a drilling rig. And nobody would give me the time to uh, go and uh, capture these bees because they wanted to get the, get going and they couldn't find, you know, I couldn't get a, um, a beekeeper there quickly enough. And so some uh, uh, 
you know, Yo-Yo went out there with some raid and he killed all of these bees. I mean, it was a massive swarm about this big. So, I mean, bees can go, you know, into all sorts of places, but I was researching this and trying to come up with something and said, okay, show me a picture because if it's out there somewhere along the line, somebody has taken a picture of an animal carcass with bees in it in a making a swarm or making a a, a hive in a in a carcass i couldn't find it i looked and looked could never find it and it may be out there but i didn't see it so and then he, he says that he went in there and he he uh, uh scraped out the honey now uh remember uh, samson is supposed to be a nazarite in, in other words, he's not supposed to go around touching dead bodies. A Nazarite cannot be uh, an undertaker, all right? He cannot uh, be someone who, um, uh, say, a butcher or something like that. I mean, it's just, it, there's just certain occupations that he couldn't do because he was not supposed to touch uh, a carcass or a dead body. But he went in there, and uh, I guarantee you that if there's bees in there, and he's going to go in there and take those honeycombs out of there, that uh, he's going to touch that carcass in one way or another, uh, because as strong as he was, I doubt that he was immune from bee stings. So he went in there and uh, got the bees, and uh, then he gave some to his parents, but he didn't tell them. So, I mean, this is deceitful on his part. He's telling, I mean, he's taking this stuff uh, from a carcass, making him uh, unclean, uh, you know, ceremonially unclean. And then he gives it to his parents, especially his mother, who was supposed to, you know, while she was pregnant with him, she could not uh, have anything that, uh, you know, she could not eat anything unclean. She couldn't uh, have anything from, uh, you know, wine, intoxicating drink, anything like that. So um, he's, he's giving that, this to them and basically, you know, the jokes on them, ha, 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 you, uh, you ate stuff from a, from a carcass and it, you're unclean and you don't even know it, uh, that sort of thing. It's, uh, we, we, sometimes we just don't realize what's going on here. There's a lot of nuance going on here that, uh, um, you just don't, don't think about too often. So, uh, you know, he'd given that to him. Then he says, then, uh, then his father went on down to the woman. So evidently then the father is still trying somehow to, uh, you know, be relevant in this whole thing. Uh, you know, somehow or, or another, maybe he's the you know, saying, well, look, I'm paying for this. I want to go down there and, and talk to the family of the woman. And it said, Samson made a banquet there. It wasn't the father made a banquet. The Samson made a, a banquet because that's what all of the young men were, uh, they, they used to do. Because so Samson is, uh, is uh, falling in line with the, the uh, customs of the Philistines there. And it just kind of pushes the father out of the picture again. He's constantly just pushing them away and out of the, out of the picture. So um, then, um, you know, he, he made his own arrangements. The father couldn't even do that. So uh, then, it, so let's go ahead. It says, now it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Then Samson said to them, let me now propose a riddle to you. If you can saw, indeed solve it for me during the seven days of the banquet and figure it out, then I'll give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothes. But if you cannot solve it for me, then you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothes. So, so propose your riddle, they said to him. Let's hear it and you know, bring it on. So anyway. So that's what, uh, at the, this is the very first day of the wedding festivities. Now in Israel, the, a wedding, uh, the whole wedding festivity thing lasted seven days. So evidently, same thing over here in uh, the Philistine territories that the, the wedding celebration would last seven days. And so at the very beginning of the, um, 
um, of the deal the very, on the very first day, um, possibly, you know, at the, uh, um, you know, the Samson is just trying to be uh, entertaining, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, um, so he, he gives them this riddle, but these, uh, let's look right now, these, these 30 men. Now, what's the purpose of these 30 companions? Uh, so are these the groomsmen or something like that or, or what is this? And they, uh, uh, when they saw him, meaning the Philistines, they, the Philistines, brought 30 companions to be with him. So basically, Samson's coming from uh, Israeli territory over into uh, the Palestinian territory, uh, Philistine territory, not Palestine, Philistine territory. And um, so they're kind of, you know, bringing it along, making him the, um, um, or, you know, helping him with, with all of the, the Philistine rituals and rites and so forth. Now, 30, to me, that would, that would seem like an awful lot of people, you know, in the, later on in the New Testament where uh, they talk about the 10 virgins, the five foolish, five wise, only 10 of them, 10 women uh, accompanying. And, and so that's more of a, of a manageable figure. But they must have looked at uh, Samson and said, hmm, okay, 30, 30 guys, that might be enough. And so... Uh, and here they're partying the whole time. The whole is supposed to be a, a a real big party for seven days. Of course, you know how in the world are you going to party and drink and and uh, you know stay standing for uh, for seven days? Well, um, you'd have to have some other kind of activities. You know, I don't know that you know whether they'd go bowling or uh, play croquet or whatever they did for seven whole days. But you, you wouldn't think that they could eat and drink for seven whole days. So. Uh, they may have had the uh, games of so, uh, different party games or something like that. So uh, that's when Samson comes up and says, "Okay, let me give you a a riddle," and then he and then he lines out and let's just make it interesting. If we're gonna, uh, you know, it's kind of like playing golf. Uh, you know, you, you play golf, but uh, let's let's wager on on the on this this hole or the whole. Uh, uh, you know, the, the whole, uh, uh, game that you're playing there that day. And, um, you know, then that way you, it, uh, you, you try a little bit harder when you know you're going to lose some money. Um, and, uh, you know, I can, I can guarantee you that whenever I played golf, uh, that, uh, if, um, if I were to wager, I would lose some money. And, um, um, but that's, um, you know, some people call it golf. I just, I didn't know what I called it, but it sure wasn't golf. Um, I had to quit playing golf, by the way, because it became too dangerous for me over there in, uh, in uh, Singapore and in, uh, in, uh, Malaysia, where we were playing a lot, uh, because uh, so many of the balls that I hit would go out into the rough. And when you go out into the rough, well, guess what? That's where the, the cobras and the black mambas and the, uh, um, things like that are. And I saw too many Cobras out there that, uh, you know, I said, well, you can have that ball. And so I, uh, uh, and, uh, a couple of times even monkeys came and, and grabbed the golf ball and ran away with it. So I quit playing golf when I came back to the state. So anyway, uh, that was a rabbi trail. Where were I, where was I? Okay. Um, so they, they, they gambled on, they, they made a wager on these, uh, uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, riddle. And it said 30 changes of clothes. And well, not only that 30 linen garments. Well, what are the linen garments? That's underwear, 30, uh, pieces of underwear and, uh, uh, 30 changes of clothes. So he said, okay, guys, uh, you know, 30 whitey tidies and 30 jeans and t-shirts. We're gonna, that's what we're, uh, we're going to wager on. And, um, you know, to me, it just sounds kind of funny that they would also wager on underwear, but whatever. Um, and so here's uh, Samson, he's, he, he's a 30 to one shot here that, uh, if they lose, then he gets 30, uh, sets of clothes. And each one of those guys is out one, 
But uh, then if, if Samson loses, then each one of those guys would uh, stand to gain one. So they, they don't get uh, – their wager is just a one-for-one. One. But uh, uh, Samson's, uh, it's a 30-to-1. If he wins, he gets 30 for his, uh, for his prize. So anyway, Samson is kind of showing that uh, devil may care uh, attitude, you know, that just uh, he's the, the a daring side of his character, you know, that uh, uh, young and foolish, you know, because I, I, I can remember uh, and uh, Alan, Alan can tell me that uh, it can uh, vouch for this, that when, uh, when he knew me in my early 20s, that uh, I was a lot taller than I am now. In fact, I was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And uh, uh, like a lot of us were in those days, you know, in, in your 20s, 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And uh, uh, so I can, you know, Samson, here he is. He's 10 feet tall and bulletproof. All right. So uh, going ahead. Anybody got any comments on that? Not on my 10 feet tall and bulletproof, but uh, any anything else? Anybody got a comment there? Nope. Okay. We'll go on. So, um, so he said to them, out of the eater came forth food. Out of the strong came forth sweet. But, you know, for three days they couldn't, they couldn't solve the riddle. And on the seventh day they said to Samson's wife, coax your husband so that he will explain the riddle to us or else we will burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us to impoverish us? So, um, it's kind of, uh, you know, one of those deals that, uh, oh, gee, all right. I found this thing here talking about, um, um, you know, I was, when I was looking for a carcass with a honey, uh, with a hive in it, couldn't find it, but I did find this that's over in the, in the United Kingdom, um, with a company that, uh, uh, <clears throat> out of the strong came for sweetness and, uh, just okay there that's a pictorial rabbi trail okay all right so the riddle was you know pretty much impossible kind of you know how in the world are you gonna you know find this or think of this because the whole idea of um you know the idea of, of a beehive up inside a nasty old dead carcass uh, which just is ridiculous. You just couldn't find it. That's unthinkable. Like you couldn't even imagine it in your wildest imagination that there would be something like that. And so, um, you know, the men have pretty well figured it out that, okay, we're not going to figure this thing uh, out. We don't know what it is. We can't even, you know, we can't think of it at all. So they start putting pressure on Samson's bride. I wish we knew her name uh, so that we could just say, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, uh, whatever, uh, a good name, uh, would be, uh, for, a for, a, a Philistine wife. Uh, and so, um, uh, okay. Yeah. Carl said that, uh, when he was a missionary in Cameroon, uh, they use that same syrup that, that, yeah, it's a UK company and one of their products is, uh, is syrup. Um, and so, yeah, I had, I'd seen that in the UK and that's kind of where I'd found it. But, uh, uh, anyway, uh, so they go to the, uh, um, they, they can't figure this out. So they go to his wife and, uh, you know, like I said, I wish they had a name so that we could call her something like, uh, uh, Priscilla or, uh, or something like that. I, I have to be careful with the name because then I might insult somebody, but, uh, Celia, you had an, an idea, a comment. <laughs> What? No, I, you just unmuted yourself. Is that uh, oh, was that an accident? Oh no, we just kept it un. We just uh, unmuted it just in case. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Just remember now, when you're unmuted, I can hear everything that you say. <laughs> you know, when if you start uh, if you start uh, bad mouthing the rabbi here, I'm gonna have to just cut you <laughs> off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the, anyway, these guys go to his wife and, uh, you know, they make a pretty serious proposal here. It says that, uh, look, if you don't tell us what this is, uh, we're going to, 
basically we're going to kill you. We're going to burn you out, burn your father uh, and your house, your father's house out. And um, so evidently these guys were really, uh, really fond of their underwear and didn't want to give it up. So, um, and they didn't want to be uh, humiliated. Um, so anyway, uh, that put a lot of pressure on them. And, uh, you know, they came to, this is on the, the this would have been on the third, uh, fourth day. So for three days, they couldn't solve the riddle. And uh, so then on this last day, they uh, come to him, uh, come to her and said, look, you don't tell us you're, uh, you're toast. And so um, then it goes on. Uh, so Samson's wife wept before him and said, you only hate me. You don't love me. You proposed a riddle to the sons of my people, yet you haven't explained it to me. And so, uh, Samson, you know, he, he doesn't have a real good argument one way or the other. He just says, look, I haven't even explained it to my father or my mother. So should I explain it to you? But, uh, she wept before him the seven days while their banquet lasted so it was on the seventh day he told her because she nagged him. Then he told the riddle to, then she told the riddle to the sons of her people. All right. Now we've got kind of a, a um, disconnect here uh, that, okay. They said, all right, uh, on the seventh day, they came to her and said, look, you don't tell us what this riddle is. Um, then we're going to burn you out. And, but then this next verse is down here. It says, so for seven days, she had been after him. So I would imagine, okay, here's, here's my explanation of how that went about. He told the guys the riddles. And so she's, she's looking at that and thinking about it. She says, come on, Samson, tell me the answer. He wouldn't do it. Second day, come on, Samson, tell me that you don't like me very much. Say the third day. And she's getting more whiny as the time goes on. And, and, uh, you know, just every day, every day, she's just whining, complaining, crying out to him. And Samson's thinking, oh, man, what was I thinking marrying her? No, he didn't say that. But um, uh, anyway, they, she had been after him for evidently for about the whole week from the time that she heard the riddle until now on the seventh day. Uh, so finally, you know, she just wore him down, just flat wore Samson down. And... Um, so he told her what it was and uh that's you know that's um how that occurred and uh uh you know the his excuse that well i haven't even told my parents well guess what he had already kind of shut his parents out of everything anyway so that um um you know they they were not a, really a part of anything and and he had kept shutting them out so why would he have told them anything? You know, because they were, um, you know, they were so far, they'd been so marginalized all along that, uh, you know, that, that was just a silly excuse on his part because he didn't want to tell her. Um, so going, uh, going ahead. Uh, so um, then she told the riddle to the sons of her people. And uh, see on that when she was uh, crying out to him that she says, you told the riddle to the sons of my people. Well, that kind of shows where her allegiance is, you know, that uh, uh, and then later on, it says she told the riddle to the sons of her people. And um, so then we see what happens in the next uh, in the next verses. So the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those kind of a deals where I can imagine Samson sitting back on the seventh day, the sun is going down and he's got his Samson sized adult beverage in front of him, even though he's a Nazarite and he shouldn't be drinking an adult beverage. He probably was. And he's sitting there watching the sun goes down and all of the, all of these uh, men of the city, the 30 dudes are sitting around there. Maybe they're uh, trying to look uh, worried and everything. And, and so just as the sun gets down there and it's starting to get a little bit cooler in the day, they just lean over there to him. And uh, then they said, so the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, 
what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And uh, then he responded to them, and this is this is classic. I mean, this is the the language here is just great. Even in English, it's great. He said, if you hadn't plowed with my heifer, you wouldn't have solved my riddle. And then the uh, ruach Adonai came mightily on him, upon him again, rushed on him, and he went down to Ashkelon and killed thirty of their men, took their spoil and gave the changes of clothes to those who solved the riddle. Since his rage was burning, he went up to his father's house. All right, a lot of stuff in here too. All right, so it's at the last minute, you know, like I just described that very, very last minute because you know, the, the, the Jewish way of counting the days is that the, at uh, sunset, the, you finish off the old day and begin the new day. And so, these guys were just waiting around and you know, it would have been for made for great, a great movie, you know, with these guys, just everybody looking at each other. Will they, don't they, won't they, do they know the answer? All that kind of stuff. So um, they tell him the story. What is, what is sweeter than honey and what is uh, uh, stronger than a lion? And the, the, uh, the idea, you know, the, Samson just, uh, he doesn't accept defeat graciously. That is not one of the things that Samson does. Um, and so, um, you know, this riddle, he answers them back in another riddle, you know, and like I said, I, I really like this one. Um, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have uh, worked out my riddle or you would not have known the answer. And so obviously his heifer is his wife and uh, um, so it, it's kind of a, of a, a double entendre, you know, plowing uh, does uh, double service as both a, a, an agriculture and a, and a sexual metaphor. And the, the common element, of course, you know, is penetration and the illicit use of Samson's property is where we're going with that. And so, um, his, uh, it, it's kind of funny because the, his opponents in this contest, remember it was beginning with the, the uh, there were uh, 30 men or 30 fellows and uh, then it uh, um, went to his wife's people. You know, she said, my people. And then now it's uh, the men of the town. So they progressed from, from uh, 30 guys to his wife's people to now the men of the town, everyone. Um, and uh, so the, the entire male population now is against Samson. And so uh, there's some timing issues here. The Bible says that the, the spirit of God came on Samson and um, again, rushed on him, came mightily on him. And, um, he said he went down to Ashkelon, um, and uh, he killed 30 men down there. Well, uh, Ashkelon is actually about 25 miles from Timnah. So um, if he did this, I mean, this was the evening. This was the, uh, the evening of that seventh day of the marriage thing. He's supposed to be at this point taking his bride to the bridal chamber and consummating the marriage, but no. They saw, the, he's now, he gets up, he gets mad, he runs off to Ashkelon, and it would have taken him hours to get down there, even at a good, uh, good, fast walk um, of, you know, I mean, a fast walk, a forced march. Um, okay, uh, Carl, you're, you're an old uh, army dude. Uh, forced march is what? Uh, uh, for a short periods of time, you can do 10 miles an hour. Is that correct or not? That's 10 a miles an hour would be pretty hard. I'm thinking more like, like five. Four or five, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, a, a long, a long one, I think, would be four or five. That's what I was getting at. Uh, 10 miles an hour, you could do at a very, I mean, for an hour or two, maybe, but that would be about it. And you'd have to be crack troops without the 70 pound uh, rucksack. So, um, anyway, it would have taken him hours and it would be nighttime to go from uh, Timna 
down to Ashkelon. But he said he did that. And he went down there and uh, somewhere along the line, however he did it, he rounded up uh, 30 guys, maybe one at a time. And he killed them and he stripped them down to their whitey tidies and uh, their linen undergarments. And he took their clothes and he came back up there and gave it to those 30 guys. So, um, you know, at that point, uh, Samson's life had taken a direction that it was never going to, that it was just never going to be the same again, because what he did, he went down there and he killed, um, these, uh, these guys, 70, uh, I mean, uh, 30 of them. And so, you know, you can imagine that the people of Ashkelon were not really pleased with that. And, uh, Ashkelon was, a uh, was one of the major cities of, uh, the Philistine, uh, country or people and it was on the coast and um so when he took that you know this this is kind of the ending of the the first part of samson's uh, uh story here in uh, judges and he would now forevermore be an enemy of the philistine people where before he was possibly just a tolerated uh oddity uh, because, uh, you know, maybe he was big and maybe he was strong, but, uh, um, and he had this long hair, which men didn't wear back in those days, but, uh, he did, he had real long hair. And so, uh, he went from being an oddity to an enemy very, very quickly. Um, and, uh, it was irreversible because now he had killed 30 men and given that, those, that clothes, uh, clothing, to these other 30 men. So you can imagine then that once he gets back to Timna, that everybody's looking around and uh, they, uh, you know, they think, well, this is, this is not how we thought this was going to turn out. And um, so the marriage would have been uh, a shambles at that point. And so, um, you know, it just, it, uh, it does not end well for, uh, for anyone at that point. And it says Samson, uh, still raging, his rage was still burning. He was still so angry and mad, even though he had captured all this and realizing this was going to take him a couple of days to do all of this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, and, and they must've been waiting around for him. And I, you can just imagine Samson, uh, you know, when he left to go to Ashkelon, the uh, you know, saying in his, in his, uh, uh, best, uh, uh, Hollywood voice, I'll be back and coming back there and, uh, and throwing the, the clothes to these, uh, these guys. And, um, so now Samson had a perpetual enemy with the, with the, um, uh, Philistine people. So going ahead to the last verse in this chapter, but Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. All right. What a, uh, what a, uh, you know, man live that's, that's uh, insult to injury there. So here, uh, uh, his wife, well, that had the party that had all of that kind of stuff. So, all right, Samson's not going to be the man. So, okay, yeah, we'll just give him to uh, this, uh, this other guy who was filling in as the best man. And, uh, you know, she's treated a little more than just, uh, uh, just you know, she's chattel uh, and just, you know, nothing. Uh, his wife given to this other dude uh, because there is no reconciliation. Nothing is going to come good of this. And uh, so... Samson is still in a rage. He's mad. He goes back to his father's house, just seething. And so nothing, it's unsettled. He is, he is uh, not happy with anything. He had just killed 30 uh, people, but uh, they're the enemy. So, I mean, that's okay uh, in his mind and maybe in the mind of the uh, Israelites too, that he'd gone and, and uh, wreaked such havoc among the uh, Philistines. They didn't really care. But the Philistines took a little dim view of that. They didn't like 30 of their people being killed and, and uh, stripped of their whitey tidies. And so um, this ends that, that uh, second part, the first part of Samson, the story of Samson in, uh, in Judges. And um, so 
Um, I think I think I've covered everything that I was going to cover in that 